In the wild, speed is an asset. Hunters use it to ambush. Others in silent attack. The fastest animals on the planet use speed to kill. High-speed cameras and a detailed study of anatomy reveal how they do it. In the depths of the Black Lagoon, killing is a highly creative business. Freakish assassins are poised to strike using spears, bullets and alien jaws. A world of action is hiding in the blink of an eye. A bizarre netherworld between ocean and river, the world's lagoons are systems in limbo. The landscape has a life of its own, bringing constant turmoil to this fluid environment. Creatures function in shifts here. Surviving is tough, and change is the only certainty. The moon pushes and pulls, toying with life here. Forcing water in and out twice a day, like clockwork. Dark mangroves create natural catacombs. Some come in for protection, but others are here to hunt. This water world crawls and creeps with life away from underwater predators. But in the Black Lagoon, nowhere is safe. This archerfish is an expert marksman. The mangrove maze is its hunting ground, and to be successful, it's become a very creative killer. There's good cover among the roots, so he targets prey above his watery realm. A powerful tail propels the archerfish into the air. So fast, the insects don't even think of escape. But this speedy tactic can only work hand in hand with exceptional camouflage. Its white body and black spots blend perfectly into the dappled shade. while its slim form has a small surface area and it's paler from above.
but judging distance through the surface is tricky. Refraction plays havoc with their range finding, so they have to calculate the offset. The archer fish's eyes are positioned close to their mouths, giving them excellent binocular vision. The eye also maps color in two different ways. They have pigment receptors tuned to the murky brown waters in the upper part for looking down, and normal color vision, much like humans, in the part of the eye that looks up and towards the surface. But if you think their jumping is impressive, you need to watch carefully. When jumping fails, the archer fish turns into a submarine water pistol and can spit out a bullet-like jet of water to dislodge insects from their lofty perch. A special groove on the roof of their mouth forms a tube with a tongue, and water is forced out by squeezing the gills. They direct the jet with the tip of their tongue even taking into consideration the arc of the water bullet due to gravity. Ready, aim, fire. These mangrove marksmen often form shooting parties that compete for prey. The archer fish is one of a kind. No other fish on the planet uses a jet of water to hunt. Beyond the deep shade of the mangroves, in the leafy suburbs of the lagoon, a blue swimming crab has just finished mating. With the help of swimming paddles, he's now on a search for food. But he's exposed, an easy target for predators. Especially predators from above. The crab makes a lucky escape, and now... This African fish eagle stakes a claim to a square kilometer of the lagoon's shoreline. It's prime hunting territory. The tide is pulling out, leaving fish and crustaceans with fewer hiding places. Spectacular vision allows her to pinpoint prey a kilometer away, even beneath the lagoon's surface. It is believed that eagles can see five times further than humans, thanks to retinas packed with light-detecting cells called cones. They also have a much deeper fovea, a cone-rich structure in the back of the eye that provides extra magnification. She may be called a fish eagle, but she'll eat almost anything that catches her eye. She's got to be quick and quiet. A powerful two-and-a-half-meter wingspan floats her lightweight frame. 
It's a deadly combination. The eagle's primary feathers are stiff and overlap to provide resistance as they beat downwards, providing maximum lift. Huge wing muscles account for half of the eagle's total body weight. They guarantee a speedy takeoff. Hollow bones offset the heavy muscle, resulting in maximum flight efficiency. Another crab straying too close to the surface. A textbook strike. The fish eagle's powerful foot exerts ten times more grip than an adult human hand while two-inch-long talons impale the crab's protective armor. Her eyes are the scope, and her feet are the death-delivering bullet. <coughs> Night falls over the lagoon. Creatures brace themselves for the incoming tide and the dangers it brings. And with the fading light, the Black Lagoon becomes darker in other ways. Predatory fish swim in from the ocean. and bizarre creatures emerge to scour the murky depths. While others lie and wait. But one of the Black Lagoon's weirdest inhabitants is on the prowl. This alien-like creature may be a dainty swimmer, but it's a professional killer. The mantis shrimp is neither mantis nor shrimp. It looks like a mantis, but it's a truly unique creature with a sinister reputation. It's hunting now. its senses alert. Not only does it have extraordinary eyes, it's equipped with razor-sharp spears for arms. This shrimp's forelimbs are like folded daggers with sharp spikes, perfectly designed to stab into the soft flesh of fish. Barbs on the ends of each spear ensure the prey has little chance of escaping. The extensor muscle tenses, but a latch holds the spear in place. When the latch is released, the sudden force of muscular energy unfolds the arm, which travels at six meters per second directly into the prey. But it doesn't go after prey. It's looking for the perfect spot to stage an ambush. Spinning may help for excavation, but it's also a display of aggression against potential predators.
the lagoon's bigger fish are on the hunt. But the shrimp is secure in its new burrow. The mantis shrimp clears his doorway of loose sand, preparing for the day shift. The burrow can be two meters deep, but it'll perch at the entrance as he waits for prey to pass. Fish are all around, but the mantis shrimp needs a smaller one. These are the most complex eyes in the animal kingdom. The eye is made up of three separate parts that work together, meaning the mantis shrimp has trinocular vision. The top and bottom sections see a similar spectrum to human eyes, but it's the middle band of photoreceptors that give them superpowers. The mid band detects infrared, ultraviolet, and polarized light. In simple terms, the eyes can judge range very accurately. Handy if you're a sharpshooter. It's a good time to be hunting. The tide is high now, and shoals of fish mass into the shallows. The mantis shrimp is ready and waiting. All he needs is for a fish to swim into stabbing range. One last distance calculation. In the blink of an eye, lightning quick daggers shoot out and stab the fish. The barbs hook in, securing the mantis shrimp's grip. The jagged limbs pull the fish towards the mouth. They're the perfect fishing rod for the perfect predator. Just when the mantis shrimp thinks he's sealed the deal, the injured fish makes a speedy escape. But it's not speedy enough. Supersonic spears, talons, and water pistols. Lagoon predators are unconventional killers. Even jaws are weird here. And how they use their jaws is another level of weird. Deadly weird. This constantly changing environment is a hard taskmaster. Residents have to adapt to the extreme. Creatures of the Black Lagoon are masters of illusion drifting seaweed that are actually fish. A desert-like wasteland that's actually full of life. A cowled nudibranch vacuums the sand.
But one lagoon resident cheats the eye in a different way. The trumpet fish is the weird cousin of the seahorse. She can change color to mimic the rocks around her. But her best disguise is her angle of attack. Even in plain sight, this glass fish doesn't seem to know she's there. But there's competition. The trumpet fish needs to make a move fast. She edges closer using the drift technique. The glass fish falls for it. She only has a few teeth, but why chew when you can suck? Early fish didn't even have jaws. Water and food were simply moved into the mouth and strained through filter bars, which later became gills. Then the bones of the first and later second gill arches became the jaws. Scales around the mouth became teeth. Typically, fish hunted by grabbing with a simple snap. Then the game changed. In some fish, the face and jaw bones separated, allowing the mouth to extend. The gape and suck technique was born. This proved such an effective feeding strategy that the majority of fish alive today have this jaw design. This grouper is one of them. A system of muscles and levers pull the lower jaw down and open, while the upper jaw is pushed forward and out. The gape opens the throat, and then the gill covers flare out. This creates a pressure difference between the inside and the outside of the mouth, and a powerful vacuum is formed in less than 0.2 seconds. Small fish are literally inhaled, faster than the eye can see. But the gape and suck doesn't end with a grouper. Beneath the sand lies a master assassin. It's practically invisible. Eyeballs are masked by a drape of skin. This fish is almost totally flat, so it's easy to keep a low profile. A moonfish trawls for microscopic zooplankton. It's scanning the water around it, but not below. Like his reptilian namesake, he erupts in attack. at a cool 50 kilometers an hour. This is the crocodile fish. Only the lucky few get away, like this shrimp. But in the lagoon, there's always another killer waiting in the wings. And this one isn't nearly as discreet.
the lionfish's striped sail-like fins keep him floating in mid-water. It's a formidable predator and a skilled suction feeder. But it also has lethal defense weapons. Dorsal spines inject venom into any predator crazy enough to attempt an attack. But the lionfish also has a very rare hunting strategy. Like the wild cat he's named after, he doesn't hunt alone. Working together as a pack, they actively search out their prey. This rocky outcrop looks like a good place to start. Perfect, a nursery shoal seeking shelter in the rocks. The lionfish move in. Their skill is using their far-reaching fins to herd their prey. This nursery shoal is surrounded. With each desperate turn, there's another hunter stalking them. Eventually, there's no hope of a getaway. With the shoal trapped, they all share in the bounty, picking them off one by one. Skulking in the shadows, a secretive serpentine hunter takes weird Jaws to a whole new level. Jaws so bizarre, they were incorporated into the extraterrestrial predator in the blockbuster film Alien. The snowflake eel may look snake-like, but it's really a fish, just without pictorial or pelvic fins. It's covered in a layer of mucus, which helps to squash the long body into tiny spaces, making it a good ambush predator. The head is too narrow to create a vacuum to suck the prey in. But there's something altogether different hidden behind those jaws. The army crab's cover is blown. The eel's going to have to get very close to unleash his weapons. Rather than rely on his weak eyesight, he follows his nose. Repositioning himself down current of his target, he sets up an ambush. Lurking in the shadows, he waits. Eel's jaw is armed with sharp, piercing teeth that curve backwards towards its throat to prevent prey from escaping. When the eel has its prey secured, it unleashes the death blow that inspired Ridley Scott's alien. 
a second set of jaws lunge forward at high velocity. These pharyngeal jaws clutch the prey and pull it down the throat, whole. Once caught in the double jaw grip, the crab can struggle all at once. Escape is not an option. It will spend its dying minutes deep in the eel's throat. Another crab manages to evade the eel's attention. Only to be taken out by a bigger, more deceptive predator. She is the lagoon's true mistress of illusion. Black a second ago, now bright yellow. A mysterious mutant with a donut-shaped brain and three hearts pumping blue-green blood. She's a cuttlefish. The cuttlefish is a mollusk, a spineless, soft-bodied animal. They top the list of the biggest brain-to-body ratio of all invertebrates. And she puts it to good use. She assesses the terrain, then morphs to match the color and even texture of her surroundings. Her secret lies in millions of tiny organs that cover her skin, each of which can be controlled separately. These chromatophores have pigmented sacs that can display red, yellow and brown. She combines this basic palette to mix more complex shades and patterns. To make her camouflage even more convincing, she takes it to the third dimension. Muscles contract around the pigment cells, forcing them upwards to create little bumps or spikes on the skin. With this arsenal of camouflage at her disposal, she settles down for an ambush. remain unmasked. She's colorblind, but she can detect subtle changes in polarized light, which enhances her perception of contrast. If a victim comes close enough, she'll try to grab it. But if it's not within reach, she unleashes a secret weapon. Two longer tentacles hidden in pouches under her eyes.
she's fast and accurate. A voracious hunter. Beneath the eight frenzied arms, multiple actions are taking place all at once. The cuttlefish strikes with its two feeding tentacles. They hand the victim over to its beak-shaped mouth, which delivers a toxic bite. Paralyzing neurotoxins are released, and a jagged tongue, layered with hundreds of tooth-like ridges, shreds the prey. She settles down in the sand to enjoy her catch. In the Black Lagoon, shifting water changes everything. Shoals of fry are constantly on the run. It's safer to be part of the crowd. Hundreds of species use the lagoon as a safe haven for their young like this juvenile kingfish. He'll be a formidable open ocean predator one day, but right now, he needs a nursery. These small glassfish also hide out here. But this nursery is no sanctuary. The kingfish may be a youngster, but it's still a killer. Kingfish are built for speed. His oblong and compressed body is a muscle powerhouse. And his forked tail enhances his agility. But the glassfish have a defense weapon of their own. A sharp dorsal spine. And the kingfish still need to learn to hunt efficiently. Practice makes perfect. High tide brings with it a pulsating predator. but it's not alone. Jellyfish invade the lagoon. They're weak swimmers, so they move wherever the current takes them. A quivering mass of 95% water, 3% salt, and 2% protein, with no eyes, no brain, and no supporting skeleton. yet they're one of the oldest multicellular animals known to man. That's given them plenty of time to perfect the art of chemical and biological warfare. Jellyfish can't chase their prey, but they don't have to. 
this fish comes seeking shelter. The tentacles make contact, and a stinging battalion is launched. Hundreds of stinging capsules administer lethal injections via harpoon-shaped needles called nematocysts, which punch into the victim simultaneously. It's the speediest killer of them all, unleashing its venom in 700 nanoseconds, which is fast. The virulent poison attacks the heart, nervous system, and skin cells, and quickly paralyzes the fish. Long-finned batfish come looking for scraps. But the jellyfish is a quick digester. It can't run off with its food. And it can't float when it's overloaded. The jellyfish hoists its victim into its body cavity, where it's digested the nutrients absorbed by the cells that line the walls. Leftovers exit the same way that the meal came in, via the mouth. And soon, dinner is over. The jellies exit the lagoon the same way they came in. This time, a little less gracefully. A force greater than any of the lagoon's residents is at work. Nothing is permanent. The tide is sucking back now, ebbing fast. Opportunistic predators, now is the time to intercept fish that are washed towards the sea. Enter the big guns. Humpback dolphins. They're one of the ocean's apex predators, but right now they're heading into the mouth of the Black Lagoon. This is no playful excursion. These dolphins are moving in to hunt, shoaling kingfish. This hunt needs shallow water, brains, and some daring moves. As the tide drops, the lagoon gets shallower. Rapid clicking noises bounce off the fish and echo back to the dolphins. The dolphins can tell the size, shape, and speed of their prey from hundreds of yards away. The dolphins work in unison to corral the kingfish onto the sandbanks. Still, kingfish are one of the fastest swimmers in the lagoon and the dolphins take advantage of this. Charging at full speed, they chase them towards the beach. The speed of their forward thrust creates bow waves, which wash the fish up the shore. Strand feeding is a unique behavior, rarely caught on film. For a brief but dangerous time, the dolphins are stuck too. But when you need to eat 15 kilograms of fish a day, it's worth the risk. Tail slapping chases the fish closer to shore.
then, as quickly as it starts, it's all over. The school of surviving kingfish follows the tide out to the open ocean. But they're still being hunted. Beyond the mouth, another of the planet's most feared predators has entered the ocean. This one is hunting alone. Above the surface, he's lethal. But he's not the only hunter down here. He's clever enough to make his own weapons. His expert aim has hit the mark. But he's out of his element, and he has competition. The struggling fish emits rapid, irregular pulsing sounds at a low frequency that attracts another lone hunter. The bull shark. The bull shark's highly specialized senses can locate the injured fish from a kilometer away. But the distressed call of the stricken kingfish alerts other predators to the crime scene. The diver is out of his depth. He can't compete with the sharks. A shoal of young fish are leaving the protection of the lagoon. And now they're exposed on all sides. Black tips. These pursuit predators whip themselves into a frenzy, a rare event caused by a supernormal stimulus in the water. The hunting kingfish are out of their league. They're mobbed. The shoaling sharks don't stop until they've cleaned up everything. On the surface, the Black Lagoon looks quiet, peaceful, and serene. But underneath, in this netherworld between ocean and river, death comes in extraordinary and unexpected ways.